In America, if you're going out for beer on St. Patrick's Day, the odds are you have choices between the travesty and silliness that is green beer and Guinness. Before I pour this, I just want to kind of illustrate something I learned a while back. Um, and also you'll notice I'm using a, a, a pub glass here. Um, how to pour a nitrogenated beer. Guinness actually is the person and the company that invented the widget and the process of nitrogenating beer for the purpose of better exporting, uh, allowing the beer to survive the export process, the, the travel process um, for their export business. And indeed, this is the nitrogenated beer. They say nitrogenated for smoothness. That is a result, but that is not the primary reason. Sorry, you just have to really let that do its own thing. When pouring a nitrogenated beer, I learned a while back, that the best way is to do a hard pour, and that's a hard pour. Just turn it upside down, let it glug out. There was one beer that I tried that with, a nitrogenated milk stout, that it didn't work with. But every other nitrogenated beer that I have poured, that is the, uh, the way I have poured it, and it has turned up a pretty decent head there. If you pour it slow, sometimes the head comes out quicker or it gives enough time for the nitrogen to, to start to come out. Nitrogen as a gas is heavier than oxygen. And also I believe when the pressure is released, it comes out of the solution in finer bubbles. So you get this very thick, creamy head and kind of the slow process of it coming out of the beer itself, which is really pretty to watch. Nitrogen also tends to depress flavors. So this beer in the bottle is going to be significantly different tasting than it is in the can and on nitrogen. Like, so Guinness is a macro brew. It's like, it's not one of the original macro brews. It is a historic macro brew. It's just macro as in it's brewed in huge quantities. It's shipped everywhere. You can get Guinness worldwide. It's widely available and it's distributed widely, which are two thing, ways of saying the exact same thing. So <laughs> whatever. I want to say it's not a simple beer. While you may think macros are simple beers, it's not a simple beer. While you may think macros are simple beers, um, they actually, as part of their brewing process, will bring in um, like it, it's it's a blend. It's not just a stout. It has um, like some sour beers mixed into it, blended into it, which produce a part of its characteristic flavor. It's a very interesting beer, that's for sure. And I think it's easy to overlook because it's such a, oh, that's just the St. Patrick's Day beer, or that's what you drink in Ireland if you're a tourist. But it's not. It's a good beer in its own right. And that doesn't mean you have to enjoy it, but it does mean that it it is worth studying <laughs> and drinking. Um, so to the nose, being an Irish stout, we're expecting this to be dry, not sweet, which is probably the opposite of what you expect, say, of an Irish whiskey. Irish whiskeys are known for being relatively sweet compared to um, Scotch whiskeys, uh, though Scotch whiskeys, I don't know if they're dry so much as earthy and smoky, um, but an Irish stout is known to be, or is this, as a style, it is a dry, that is not a sweet beer, uh, which kind of runs counter to what stouts can be. Um, I'm expecting some complexity in this. I'm expecting dryness. I'm ex expecting biscuit, you know, kind of dry bread sort of, um, sort of flavors out of it, and a bit of roastiness, because, you know, it's black. And indeed, to the nose, there's, there's a nice, like, dark, um, dry breadiness, and then maybe the hint of roast coming through. But then also, and this is kind of hard to pick up because the nitrogen, all the all the flavors and the smells are are very are subtleized, are dulled. They're they're um, 
uh, they're reduced in a lot of ways. They're just smoothed out, not like lager smooth, but it's an ale that was made smoother through the process of nitrogenation. And um, I'm not sure I could pick up the, the, the sour beer that's been blended in here, but there is definitely some additional complexity going on there that's very fetching. The, the roastiness is like a, a dark coffee roasty. With perhaps like the darkest of chocolates in there. It's interesting that the head actually looks like um, bread dough that's rising. It's so thick and it's just, it's just not going away. <laughs> like an old friend um, smoothness throughout everything is just smoothed out by the use of the nitrogenation but there is um, a surprising juiciness there is um, kind of dark cracker spread with coffee <laughs> dark chocolate spread with dark chocolate with some coffee in there um, there is there's a lot of stuff. It's surprising what's going on there. Like, once again, going back into the mindset, this is a macro beer, but it's got a lot going on. And it's, even as a, a nitro beer, um, nitrogenated beers, I don't think tend to lend themselves towards sipping. They generally are smoothed out, so it's easier to put big mouthfuls in and drink them relatively quickly. But you can hold this in your mouth and spend time sussing out different flavors and, and experiences. There could be a, a milky creaminess to this. Perhaps some almond, like some nuttiness in there. But it's a, it's a smooth nuttiness, like an almond. Um, as opposed to say a, a bitter nuttiness like a walnut, like a, like a walnut, or a sweet nuttiness like a pecan. It's kind of in between those. It's it's smooth like an almond. Um, there's the finish is is like coffee, but with maybe a hint of bread dough in the back end, um, which might be. Some of those, some of those mixtures, some of the the sour beer. Um, I don't know. That's just what comes to my mind. Sorry, I feel like I'm grasping at the moment. Excuse me. Yeah, I would almost describe this as um, like a a Coca Cola or a like a, a root beer of beers in that there is it's surprisingly approachable for a stout for a stout for like a a, a dark coffee stout um and there's very there's enough interesting other things going on there that that you can that it's easy to approach it's approachable it's easy to enjoy I do enjoy this. It's been a while since I've had their like their foreign extra or their their other bottled beers. Um, I mean to get some of those at some point. Like I mean to get every beer just to kind of remind myself what the what their non nitrogenated uh, versions are. Being one of the European beers that's shipped in very dark bottles, they should travel pretty well, and I would expect that given their their volume and their popularity. It should be easy to find relatively fresh examples of these on the store shelves um, and and even of the bottles. So uh, as far as, you know, access, sometimes imported beers, they move slowly or um, or just take so long to get here that they're old by the time they get here. But A, it's a stout and stouts don't really worry about shelf life quite so much other as other beers. B, it's in a very dark bottle, like a, a very dark bottle. So that is marks in its favor. It's not going to be skunked by light. Um, 
see the volumes and popularity means it's going to move relatively quickly and its distribution network is likely going to be pretty efficient because they have to get the beers or the places so i it's on my list of of import beers that i need to try again because i believe really it might be as long as five to ten years since i've had a bottled guinness but that's not the beer in front of me at the moment the canned guinness is and it's not green so all the better um <laughs> i've spent several years in chicago and uh, chicago goes all out for saint patrick's day they turn their river green yes literally like the chicago river it, it's kind of u-shaped around their downtown um, coming out of lake michigan and they go up and down a segment of it in boats and they throw powder and the one time i went to see to, to watch it happen um the the powder they were throwing out was orange and it's these men in bunny suits and i can imagine that powder has got to be all kinds of unpleasant on your skin so they're wearing like full bunny suits and hoods and stuff like that and they're throwing these buckets full of orange powder into the water which i guess chemically reacts once it hits the water and turns green and the boat motors kind of stirred up so they're going back and forth and throwing this stuff out and it was really quite the uh, quite the sight and there are crowds just for a freezing february morning it was below freezing it was like 20 degrees or something it was really chilly and um there were huge crowds everywhere and after the river turns green then there's a big old parade downtown and uh jewel osco one of the grocery stores there has like this 20 foot tall um, shopping cart uh has their um, has their float in the parade it's really hilarious super chicago um and then all the bars are advertising green beer woohoo i did not um i was not drinking beer back then i don't think um and i did not have the, the green beer so i don't know what it tastes like i'm guessing it's just a bog standard pale ale that's got food coloring in it so uh no thank you no no thank you um i know they're nowadays with some of the craft beer brewers getting crazy with their creativity there are some pretty wild beer colors out there so i guess it wouldn't surprise me if there were some like uh, craft created green colored beers that had a level of artisanship to them as well as you know playing to the market but um yeah green beer isn't isn't really the thing that speaks to me when i think saint patrick's day uh i suppose to be technically accurate um i wear the orange on saint patrick's day because i'm a protestant not a catholic uh the catholics wear the green and the protestants wear the orange and then they fight each other like irish people you know like 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 they do right anyways guinness I like Guinness. Guinness is a good beer. Guinness is a surprisingly good beer, especially given that it's such a widely distributed, huge volume beer. I think it's a really great example of a massive brewery that has a super popular product spending the time to do, to, to create that product with the spirit of craft. It's not craft in the size sense. Um, I know in the U.S. there's like a legal definition of craft brews have to come from, um, you know, breweries that have below a certain bottle or barrel per year production level. Um, and this is far and away exceeding anything like that. It's probably not at the, you know, Budweiser level of production, but it's still, it's a big brewery. And they still take the time to mix in sour beer and to develop and carefully um, create a consistent product that is very um, that is compelling and it's excellent in the complexity and um, and also in the uh, widget their inventiveness in developing that um, I suppose you'll find that widget in just about every um, nitrogenated can you find um, it's pretty typical I believe the releasing of the of the tab actually allows like an extra infusion of nitrogen from the widget i think that's how that works though uh, it's been a long time since i looked that up um anyways they are worthy of respect and i would definitely recommend that if you have not had a guinness you should try a guinness um and their draft stout 
is a good one to try in the can with the nitrogen, but also their foreign and their foreign extra are definitely worthy of uh, drinking. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. Um, not wearing any green today, nor really wearing any orange because it's actually still like three weeks until St. Patrick's Day, but you know, I need to record this, time to edit it, and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, drinking Irish beer at least, and <laughs> I'll catch y'all on the flip side.